maturity to the locker room. The Tiger Cats have been such a young team the last few years. They didn't necessarily want to get old, but they wanted to get a little bit more mature, get a little bit of leadership, and they, they accomplished that with the people they brought in. Oh, another high staff. Porter on the run. And has to let it fly down the sideline. That is the third or fourth time now that Quentin Porter has had to leap high to bring the ball down. That time it sailed over his head. This has been a miserable start for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And this is odd coming from a veteran center like Marwan Hage, but you saw that one. He's sliding to his right in protection. He's got Adriano Belli lined up in front of him. These two guys are good friends, but I'm betting that Belly is in his head a little bit that Hage wanted to get such a jump to the right that he pulled his snap with him. Nick Setta. Devontae Edwards, a newcomer, one of the DBs for the Argos, handles their returns tonight. Nowhere to go. There is a penalty flag on the play near the tie Cat bench. Well, how about the Argos? We talked about how well they've started this season offensively. First two drives, first two scoring drives of the season, both over 90 yards in the same quarter. I'm, I'm sure we didn't see that from the Argos in 2008. That kind of consistency and balance, the involvement of the Fraction running back, Jamal Robertson. First down. So the Argos will try to do it again here, just under three minutes to go. And Kerry Joseph, maligned last year, frustrated last year, did not look like the Kerry Joseph when he left Regina and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders after a great cup win, a most outstanding player. He looked like a guy ready to quit. Well, right from day one, all eyes were on Kerry Joseph. Everything questioned the acquisition of Kerry Joseph. How is Kerry Joseph going to get along with Michael Bishop? Did the offense fit Kerry Joseph? Did Kerry, has Kerry Joseph lost it? Right side this time for Jamal Robertson. They've been going to the left quite a bit. Couple of yards. A little better run support from the Hamilton secondary on that play to string the play out laterally rather than letting Robertson get it turned up field. But you look at the Toronto Argonauts, much like Hamilton, they come into this season with a lot of optimism compared to the way they finished last year. You look at the reasons why for these guys, number one to me is the discipline that head coach Bart Andrus has instilled. This is a team that lacked structure last year. There was a little bit of complacency. Now these players have been challenged. And the clock runs out. Light clock went down to zero. Hard to believe, though, the Argos last year, four and five, looked poised at that time. So, you know, being in line for a playoff spot, you know, near Labor Day, and then it, they just didn't capsize. They fell right to the bottom. Well, they sure did. The irony of, of the fact that they fired Rich Stubler when he was just under 500. Well, if they had stayed just under 500, they'd have cruised into the playoffs the way the East Division turned out last season. And Don Matthews came in. And didn't get a win. Joseph now. Here's the rush over the middle. Couldn't find McNeil, and Kerry Joseph took a lick. Yannick Carter. Former rider comes in to give him a hit. Here's what's happened to the Toronto Argonauts last season. Take a look at the national anthem. And you've got players standing everywhere. Some guys scattered down by the goal line, a few guys at the bench, some on the line, some off the line. Here you see everybody standing on that sideline, helmets under the same arm, looking like a team, looking respectful, looking organized to play. That was something that lacked. That was one of the first issues that Bart Andrus addressed when he arrived. Eddie Johnson, who had some trouble in the preseason with a couple of blocked punts, gets one away and uh, brought down and turned back R.K. McDaniel and Matt Black in on the tackle Black the native of Toronto rookie cornerback out of Saginaw Valley State drafted a year ago got tremendous speed he was one of the most impressive players in Argo camp does a nice job slicing underneath the block of Chris Thompson there in and secures the tackle good way for a young Canadian to make his name hustling on special teams under a minute to go in the opening frame. Order behind center this time. 
Here's the rush over the middle, and it's picked off. Kevin Ivan has the interception. And a bit of a floater from Quentin Porter. Yeah, a rare bad decision from Quentin Porter to throw that football, floating it across the middle into traffic. Just a heck of an athletic play by Kevin Ivan. Ivan, weak, weak side linebacker, number 35. Breaks off his man, hustles into the middle. Great diving play, gets the arms underneath, no question. But he caught that one. Rain starting to fall now on Hamilton. First interception of the season. Number 35 of the Argos, Kevin Ivan. Joseph back to work again. Final 30 seconds, first quarter. Joseph zigzagging in the backfield. Gets away from one tackle, wide open. Is Bruce on the sideline? And down to the 10-yard line. And right now, Kerry Joseph is shredding the Tiger Cats. Well, the Tiger Cats finally got some pressure on Kerry Joseph on this play. But when you've got a QB who can run like a running back, you better come under control. And the Tiger Cats failed to do that. You're going to see guys overrun. Otis Floyd, the redirect, but ducks out of the way to, to avoid the block. I believe Darrell Adams was the, was the other one who had a shot at him. Just took a bad angle, and Joseph dodged him. Had plenty of time. Arlen Bruce was wide open. Barring penalty could be the final play of this opening quarter. There's the penalty. Harry Joseph told us yesterday about, you know, sometimes good starts are a little overrated in a season. This is a great start to a ball game by Kerry Joseph. Asai Hamilton, number 95, remains first down. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon, but when you get off to a start like this... Well, that, and it doesn't hurt when you get breaks like this. Here you see the defensive halfback in coverage, Jeff Tisdale, just loses his footing. So at the same time as Kerry Joseph is breaking free in the backfield, Arlen Bruce is breaking free on his route. Up the middle, touchdown, Shamal Robertson. Way, like butter. Way too easy. Like butter on the final play of the opening quarter. They'll kick the point after. And with the rain falling right now, the Hamilton Tiger Cats could not have envisioned a worse start. Well, they sure could. Great cutback there by Jamal Robertson. But this was one of the concerns for the Hamilton Tiger Cats coming into this season. Is that defensive line. They've got three new starters. Two who are brand new to the CFL. Another who's starting for the first time. The only blemish. A missed point after by Jared Payton. 20 to nothing Argonauts after one on opening night in the CFL. Toronto Argonauts won the little scrap and they won everywhere else early on here. One quarter down, they've already put 20 points on the board. It hasn't even been close. Well, this Toronto offense has just been outstanding. Precision from day one. And maybe it's that the Hamilton defense looks terrible. At the line of scrimmage, the Tiger Cats are getting pushed around far too much. And this has been a change in the identity of the Toronto Argonauts offensive line. They've been questioned the last few years for being a little bit soft. No more. They're doing a terrific job on the run, and that's helping set them up in their pass protection as well. Look how this game began. With the kicker getting hurt, it could have been disaster for the Argonauts. There's that little skirmish. And since that time, rack up all that penalty yardage. Kerry Joseph gets some confidence. See my goons right here. And they find the end zone three times. You heard Jamal Robertson say it. The old line, those are his goons. R.K. McDaniel now trying to find some running room. May have it outside. And there's an extra hit after that. As again, close confines here at Iverwind Stadium. Ray Fontaine hit him out. And so you can add some more yardage onto this play, and the Tiger Cats are going to get some good field position, or at least they should. Just, just a little extra mustard on that shove from Ray Fontaine as he took him out of bounds, but it's going to cost him 15. 
15 yards from the end of the play, first down. Let's see how close it is on those sidelines you played here. You know what it's like. Yeah, in this stadium, it's uh, that is a job hazard. The proximity of those stands. Well, Quentin Porter, starter tonight. At best, get it going, or we may see Kevin Glenn sooner than we thought. That's a good start on this possession. Chris Davis came in late last season, makes his first catch, and apparently draws a flag. He was shoved by an Argo defender after the play. There you Moreno go. Deliver the shove. Major foul. Unnecessary roughness. Toronto, number eight. 15 yards. Automatic. Oh. Now we saw the penalty yardage against Hamilton after that scuffle in the first quarter cost them in terms of setting up a Toronto scoring opportunity. Now we've got a couple of Argo penalties. Could this turn the tide here in the second? Again, 25 yards in penalties. That's the first time we get a look at the former cat, two-time CFL All-Star. Zeke Moreno now in the middle. Occupying a spot that was once held by a guy who became legendary in Toronto, Mike O'Shea. Play action, Davis again. Looks like another first down. I don't think Moreno's going anywhere near him. A great execution here on the bootleg by quarterback Quinton Porter. The guy you want to keep an eye on here, the defensive end, Claude Harriet. He bites on the run fake here. He's collapsing down inside, chases Terry Cauley. Quinton Porter pulls the ball. There's no one out there to contain him. He's got lots of time to find Chris Davis. We have not heard from Priche Rodriguez yet. Cauley down to the three. Rookie of the year in the East last year. Rodriguez has been catchless so far, but right now the Cats look like they're sniffing the end zone. And this could be a little bit of that veteran maturity for this Hamilton team. And the poise as well. I'm going to give a lot of credit here to Quentin Porter, head coach Marcel Belfoy. You think back to a year ago, you know, any team is going to take its cues from its head coach and its quarterback. And the guys who were in those two spots last year let their frustration show. It affected everyone around them. Porter to the end zone, deep, and threw it away. Great decision. And that's something he did not do in those early games when we first saw him. He would try to force that football in. Yeah, a couple times he, he really did. I think the excitement got to him last year. Marcel Belfe took over from Charlie Taff. And you, you think back to last season, you know, and Charlie Taff was so committed to this team that he wore his emotions on his sleeve. Sometimes you just you need someone to keep things on an even keel with the young team. Hawley tries to shake one. And he, will he? Yes, he will. Touchdown. And what a hit. He takes. Pats on the board. Welcome to football season. Ho, ho, ho. That's smash mouth right there. Love it. 